Welcome to Heart Mindify. Before we start the show, just a reminder to share, rate, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it. And please give us a five-star rating. It helps us beat the big tech algorithms. I'm John Izzy. Change can be difficult for a lot of us, but when we understand what makes us tick, we develop a better understanding of who we are and begin a journey of discovering our best self. Join me for a free session at johnizzy.com. And I'm Kim Cordy, creator of the Emotion Chef Framework, an emotion management tool. Thoughts drive emotions and emotions drive thoughts, but it's our emotions that drive our decisions and behaviors. Find out more at kimcordy.com. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Knowing each other personally and socially for the past 10 years, Kim and John have joined forces, bringing years of experience and training, providing a platform for growth and personal development, along with a little humor. John is the heart, Kim is the mind, and together they are Heart Mindified. Hello, Kim. How are you today? I am great. I'm cold. We are having crazy, crazy rainstorms, very much needed, super grateful, Uh, but it's been on the cold side. It's raining in California. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. That song was about Southern California, but a friend of mine lives in LA and he was telling me, we got rain, sleet, hail, snow. He's like, we've had everything. It's just been, um, it's all or nothing apparently, but that's okay. Yeah, you guys yeah. need the rain for sure. Well, I think I've told you this before, but across from our home is this huge park. And in our development, all of the rainwater goes into this park. It's a depressed park yeah, yeah, and it yeah. actually yeah. fills up and it turns into a lake. And so now we've got a bunch of frogs. You can hear them, whatever they say. <laughs> and and there's all kinds of birds. And we were laughing because we saw all the ducks hanging out. And then we saw all of the seagulls hanging out. There were some egrets. They were all together. And then at the far end were all the crows. And there was one seagull amongst all of those crows. And Andrew's like, what's going on? I go, they've got uh, diversity and inclusion training. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's I thought it was fantastic. funny. That is great. <laughs> I have a question for you. Currently, I'm writing my second blog post for Havoca, which stands for Help for Adult Victims of Child Abuse. You know I work with adults that have been sexually abused as children, right? And I've been asked to write some blog posts for this website. Great website with lots of information. It's H-A-V-O-C-A dot org. Anyway, at the end of my first blog, I began to talk about trying to understand your authenticity and truth. And what does that mean? And I hinted in the first article that sometimes when we have a traumatic experience in our life, we tend to build a lot of people say we tend to build walls, right? And then we live in front of the wall to the outside world. I always like the word veneer because a wall, a wall to me means that you can't see through it. A veneer, you kind of can see what's going on. So when we're referring to sexual abuse or childhood sexual abuse, I always refer to the child living behind a veneer, looking out into the world, but kind of afraid to pull it down. So they can see what's going on but they're kind of just sitting back and just observing, right? So I always use the term veneer instead of a wall. So I'm writing the second article now or the second blog post now, and I'm going into depth of how do we break down the veneer and try to discover who we are internally and that true representation of who we are to our core. And as as I was thinking about different things to include in the blog post, Somebody asked me a question the other day, and they said, why do people say things about me 
that just aren't true. And where did they get that opinion? And since I've been thinking about this whole topic, I simply said to them, are you hiding who you truly are by putting up some type of veneer or wall and acting in a way that represents somebody that you aren't? And they kind of looked at me and they went, oh, wow. Well, I never thought of that. And I was like, well, sometimes we want people to perceive us a certain way, right? That we feel that, let's say that you're, I don't know, let's say that you are trying to engage in conversation with somebody because you think their conversation is interesting. And you know that they're talking about a topic that you're really not that well-versed in, but you enter the conversation pretending to be versed in a topic that you really aren't. In other words, you're saying things that would sound as if you really are knowledgeable. So they perceive you to be a certain way when in reality, you're not that person at all. And they were like, oh, well, that makes sense now. I see what you're saying. And so I thought we'd just hash it out here for a little bit, a couple minutes and just talk through it because I know you have some ideas on maybe it's not the individual, right? That's right. Living, yeah. It's not, it's not me. It's you. <laughs> right. 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 So why would that be important? It's not me. It's you. What are you referring to there? A lot of people get the idea that, oh, we've heard it a million times. You make me so mad. You right. irritate me. No, I'm irritated in response to how you are behaving. Whether that is the right response or not, it's your response because you create, you construct that emotional response based on your brain, based on your history. It, it, you know, they call it the brain berg. We've got 95% to 99% of our responses are non-consciously generated, meaning we are relying on our history to project our emotions. We we often like project our emotions even without having all the facts. We just guess it and that's what comes out because we're not conscious of it. Let's just say your friend has a particular mannerism, a way of expressing themselves or using words to convey what they're thinking. And the person who's receiving the information has some past experience or for whatever reason, that doesn't settle well with them. And they relate that way of expressing themselves or whatever mannerism to everybody who's ever done that. And they have a negative experience with that. So okay. guess what? They're going to be negative about that person because they're saying, oh, this, my experience up till now has been everybody who has this particular kind of mannerisms is uh, someone I don't want to hang out with. So they automatically create a response and without being present to really give that person a chance, they're going to say, oh yeah, you know, I, I don't like you. I don't know if that fits to the situation that you were in, but it exactly, but it kind of gives you that idea. Like we create our emotional responses. And there's nothing, nothing that I can do to change that person except to, as you, I think, suggested to them, I think we'll get to that in a second, but to bring them to mindfulness, to engage them in a thought process to, to validate if their response is true or not. I think your um, explanation is, is, is a good one because there is a trend to saying that, you know, people will say, God, you make me so mad. And my response to them is no, you're allowing their behavior to have a negative in influence on you. You're the one that's choosing to be angry, not them. So we tend right. to, so we tend to go back to the individual person, right? But in some cases, like you said, it can be exasperated because of experiences that the other person has had in their prior life, right? That gives them that understanding that this behavior is something I don't like. Whether it's a true representation of that person or not, doesn't matter. It's their experience. And that's what they immediately go to. 
So my my response to them was how often are you getting that feedback from people, right? Or is, is it this one person that has said that or has it been multiple people? And they stopped and kind of thought about it for a minute and they said, well, when I think about it, it's come up in evaluations at work and it's come up in different scenarios, but it's not like it's a topic that's always brought up. And I thought, okay, so then there is some truth maybe in their perception. So if there, if you think that there might be some truth, begin to ask the question, why? And they said to me, ask them why? I said, no, ask yourself why. And they kind of looked at me and said, what do you mean? So my response to them was begin to break down the behaviors, begin to break down the motivations behind the behavior. Why is it that you extend your right hand when you're going to catch a ball? Well, there's a reason for that, right? It's because you're right-handed or it's because your go-to response is throwing out your right hand, right? So there's a reason for that behavior, right? So begin to ask yourself those questions. Begin to ask, what is the motivation behind this response that I gave this person? And is it benefiting me or am I doing it so that it benefits something else or someone else, right? So try to begin to break down those motivations and look to yourself to say, why am I behaving the way that I'm behaving? And we do that all the time without even realizing it, right? We'll say, "Mm, damn it, I shouldn't have said that. Well, there was a motivation that made you say it, right? So look at, start looking at the motivations. Look at the, look at the reasonings. Ask yourself the question, why was my advice to her? I, and I agree and would just say, what was the feeling behind the motivation? That's good. Good. Because feelings drive our decisions and behaviors. And if, we tend to do things, behave certain ways or act certain ways to try and protect ourselves, protect the image we, and I think you talked about this already, the image that we have of ourselves or the image we want to project to other people. And guess what? Most people know who and what you are and they can smell when something's just not right. And it goes back to your thoughts conversation about being authentic. And when you're truly authentic to who you are and that you accept yourself, warts and all, and not try and be someone that you're not, you don't have really any good motivation to try and have unauthentic behaviors because you're trying to protect what you may think is a negative aspect of yourself that might not not even be negative. That's so true. And I think part of the reason for that kind of for that kind of response is because we tend to group we tend to group things together. We tend to say we tend to use words that describe multiple feelings when we're too lazy to apply specific words to specific feelings, right? Does that make sense? So we'll group you're, things. You're talking to you're talking to the the queen of granularity. That's <laughs> right? my new title. Right. New title, queen of emotional granularity. <laughs> but it's true though, right? So I think that, you know, I always go back to, you know, pinpointing the true cause of a feeling, pinpointing the true cause of a behavior. And pinpointing means looking at the motivation behind it when it comes to behaviors, um, when it becomes to feelings, pinpointing, what is it that, what is it that is actually going on? Because if we don't, if we don't come to some reason that we're performing a certain way, then we're going to group everything together. And we're going to say that no matter what emotions or matter what behaviors or what's motivating me, I'm just, I'm just going to perform this way. And it's, 
it's unclear to people that are listening to you and it's unclear to yourself because you're not giving your you're not giving yourself permission to discover who you are internally right and it and it takes being uncomfortable with with truths and and accepting right you, you have to be uncomfortable in the sense that you're going to realize and recognize and accept that there are some things that you are not comfortable with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and if you're living, if you're living behind a protective veneer, then I'm going to suggest that your actions or your behaviors are not representations of who you are, but perceptions of a person locked in the emotional entrapment of some type of event in your life, right? So what you're giving off to people when you live behind a veneer is perceptions of who you are. You're not being authentic in what you're giving them. You're giving them perceptions. So they're taking those perceptions as truth. Yeah, they're they're in our head and... We do this all the time. I know I do. I have a perception of myself and I see myself differently than others. And I'm very hard on myself, probably harder than I should be. And yeah, I, me too. I, I, you know, I, That's the I perfectionist pull, in us, Kim. <laughs> yeah, but I need to pull that back and, and, and acknowledge, you know, what I, I am. And on the other side of it, like the good, the positive things of my, for myself and what I've accomplished and to look at all those things. But on the other side, we might feel like we're not accomplished enough. So we pretend like we are, like you were talking about right, earlier. Right. And that's where you start to get sniffed out pretty darn quickly. Especially by people that are experts in a certain field or, or something like that, because they can, they can spot, a. Uh, quote, fake anywhere. You have to appreciate the honesty of, for yourself, that you're honest with who you are and what you are. And, and that's the, the, what you truly are and what you're truly not. But in telling other people that they're just like, wow, like you trust them more. Like, how can you build trust? There's nothing more trustworthy than not feeling authenticity from somebody. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think those are the, those are the questions of the day. I mean, I think we need to begin to break down, you know, why we do the things we do, why we say the things we say, why we're feeling the way we feel, you know, just because, just because my mother told me I had to be this way doesn't mean I actually am that way or that I actually have to be that way. Right. Right. Well, I think that the answer really to the question is a balanced response. Could it be me or could it be you? Yeah. Cause or a combination it could of both. be, yeah. Or a combination of the both and the recognition that you can't change other people. All you can do is the best that you can for yourself to be the best person that you can be. And There's so many things you talked about the all or nothing. They may have an opinion of you because you belong to a particular group or a religion or a political affiliation. And then you get lumped in to this group and the whole ideas that they have in their mind about that group and, or a sexual orientation or, I mean, like it, or your gender. I mean, there's so many things that, that lurk in the minds of humans and that's the thing. It's 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 an unending sea of possibilities because there's so much that we learn. And the older you are, the more junk that that's in that sea in your mind. So do what you can for yourself. And if somebody doesn't accept you for who you are, nothing you can do about it. No. And you'll find somebody that will accept you for who you are. Yeah. Their loss. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I'm glad we talked about it because I think it, um, 
I think a lot of people find at some point in their life where they feel misunderstood or they feel that people put labels on them or believe that they are a certain way and they struggle with the fact that, no, I'm not. And how can I express that to someone and say, no, I'm not who you think I am. This is who I am. And my response to that is then show them, right? Instead of falling into the trap that they're putting you in, show them that you aren't who they think you are. Show them by your behavior, show them by your actions. And when you do that and you find that true representation of who you are to the outside world, then that goes to your deepest core. And that will be reflected in everything you do. Your values. Yeah. Those, I, you you just hit that on the head. And like I said before, you just, you can't fight city hall. So you can't fight other people's perceptions and, and how they put things together. Cause really it's their recipe, not yours. That could be the problem. Yeah. Good, good topic, John. Yeah, you think? I thought it was good, right? I did. I thought it was yeah. good. And it's what's really nice about it. And like, this is coming from somebody who's struggling with something. And I invite anyone who listens to our podcast, if there's something that you're struggling with or a question that you have, or how do I talk to somebody or how do I approach this or how do how do I potentially handle this? just contact us. We'd be happy to handle that topic here on the show. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea because, you know, we get, we get questions thrown at us all the time and sometimes we attempt to answer them or sometimes we think, well, how do, how would I answer it? And, and then before you know it, the question is gone and it's never addressed until it happens again. So this is an opportunity to do, you know, ask that question and then, get Kim and I's take on it. And we'll tell you what we think. And it might be wrong. It might work for you. Who knows? But at least you're going to get an answer because we're going to talk about it. (laughs) Because we care, right? Wrong or indifferent, we care. That's right. We care. All right, Kim. Well, use an umbrella when you go outside. I know. Do you even have an umbrella? (laughs) John, John, I actually have a raincoat you know, it does rain. Raincoat? Who wears a rain? You know, women wear. I do not. I don't even. I can't even tell you the last time I had a raincoat. I had a yellow one when I was little. I used to hate wearing it. No, I'm not talking about a slicker, hot. that plastic slicker. Uh, yeah. that's, not what, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a jacket with a hood that keeps you warm and was meant to be worn in the rain. Not all my jackets are rain worthy. But. <laughs> We we do get rain. We have to because we've got a drought. So we yeah, exactly. we, we we need rain. We definitely need the rain. It's, it's not the rain as much as this fierce wind. Is it chilly out there now? What's the temperature out there? It, right do you know now, off the top of your head. Yeah, it is fifty two. Mm. The other night it was twenty eight degrees in the middle of the night and our hummingbird feeder was mostly frozen all their little their f- sweet nectar that i make for them every day and <laughs> our bird bath was actually frozen the the water in the bird bath was just a big chunk of ice oh the poor wildlife yeah. in california <laughs> when it gets cold it doesn't know what to do oh look i'm a good feather mama i make sure We've got two hummingbird feeders, and last night the bar was full. We had twenty because there's <laughs> ten feeding troughs. You know, it has a little. It, it was fantastic. They were all feeding. I go through a, a pint, or no, two pints, half a gallon a day. Really? Yeah. Wow! Wow! All right. Yeah. Well, listen. You go enjoy your um, hummingbirds and your rainy weather and the chill in the air. And I'm going to go back to this article and try to finish it up so I can get it sent out. Um, yeah. to the Maybe you got some 
Maybe you got some juice for your article we were talking oh, I today. Think so. I think so. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Kim, have a great week. John, you do the same. I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Bye. All righty. Bye, everyone. shows are available every Saturday right here on heartmindify.podbean.com or wherever you listen. Kim and I would like to thank each and every one of you for allowing us to be a small part of your life. Be kind to yourself and remember, our hearts tell the story, but our mind is the conductor. Conductor.